Hey guys, Stuart Brady, and welcome back to S2 TV, and we're going to continue our conversation about program design. Now, the couple of videos that I've, I've done that preceded this, we were including the M series workout design into our program. Today, we're going to talk about something different. So, the title of this video is the trifecta getting big, strong, and ripped. So, I want to kind of talk to you just really quick about what we do for the most part at Studio 2. Most of our clients that come in are looking for general fitness, they're looking for weight loss, they want to feel better, they want to get fit, they want to look better, increase energy levels. Almost all the clients that we work with at the studio um, are in some kind of executive level, so time is also essential. So. The workout designs are kind of a no-brainer, one-stop shop, and they fit that kind of person uh, to a T. Today we're going to start talking about somebody a little bit different that has a, a different goal in mind. We want to get bigger, we want to put on mass, uh, I want to get stronger, but at the same time I'm not looking to get fat and bigger. I want to get ripped to shreds and huge. So. I'm going to talk to you about how we can do that. And um, so, you know, I think the best way to start this is, um, as you guys probably know, I read everything I can get a hold of. Um, there are people out there that I really think are incredibly smart, and I try to devour everything that they write. And this is one of the guys, so if you can see this book, Tudor Bompa is... Um, is what I would call the father of periodization and I'll do some more videos here uh, to follow this up on periodization. He was, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure he was the Romanian weightlifting coach um, and you know was really responsible for elevating not just uh, Romanian weightlifting but, but the entire level of athleticism in many different events, track and field, gymnastics, uh, really, really super smart guy. This book, Serious Strength Training, is a must read. You, you have got to read this. If you're serious about putting on mass, understanding the science of how and why um, your body works, um, you have got to read this book. And, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about a program design that I have always used for myself and also my clients who are looking to experience a serious level of hypertrophy. And I developed it a lot from Tudor Bompa's work. And I'm telling you guys, it, it freaking works. That's all there is to it. Uh, and I've also got my little spin on it as well. Without further ado, as you can see, I've got a weekly schedule set up here again, okay? So just like the other schedule, um, I'm going to start with the body split, chest, shoulder, tricep, L is legs, B and B is back and biceps, Thursday off, Friday chest, shoulder, tricep, repeated legs, back and biceps. So this program design is called a three on one off, three on one off, and I continue that cycle for about eight straight weeks, okay? Now, not everybody will be able to do that. Um, some people may have work issues and they're not able to just train on any given day. You may have family issues and not want to train on a Sunday, which at some point this program design will, will happen. So, you know, one week we're starting here, Monday, chest, shoulder, tricep, leg, back and bicep, Thursday, off, uh, chest, shoulder, tricep, leg, back and bicep. Well, the following Monday I'm off again, then I start picking it back up, chest, shoulder, tricep, leg day, uh, back and bicep, I'm off on Friday, um, and then three on one off. So you're never off on the same day. Now, from a recovery standpoint, one of the reasons this is so effective is I'm never more than about 72 hours from coming back in and hitting this muscle group all over again. So chest, shoulder, tricep, I got three days, boom, I hit it again. Now, so if you're able to do that, that kind of calendar, I really recommend doing it. If not, you may just have to have a consistent off day and then schedule the other six days. So there's a lot of stuff to talk about when we're creating this kind of uh, workout design. Um, so once you understand that layout, we're going to run that for eight straight weeks. 
After eight weeks, we're going to switch up the body parts and we're going to run another six weeks for a total of 14 weeks. Now, um, 14 weeks of this kind of training, I'm telling you guys, we're going to get to a point to where you're really going to start um, experiencing a breakdown of the energy system. And the energy system that we're talking about is the PC system or creatine phosphate system. That system is responsible for about the first 10 to 12 seconds of activity in the body. There are many different energy systems. We're moving out of ATP or stored energy in the first three seconds, five seconds, and we're moving into the PC system. One of the great things about this book is it will really help the, the layman start to understand energy systems. And if you don't understand energy systems, guys, uh, pay me and I will, I will help educate you. Uh, but you have to get it. In all seriousness, you really need to understand energy systems because the, the effect or the, the cosmetic effect, if I want my body to look a certain way, there's a time variable that I need to be in to get that kind of workload. So if you think about your 100 meter sprinter, how they are built, they're yoked, they're ripped, they're big, they've got tons of muscle on their body, guess what? It's because their sport is predominantly in this PC system, okay? Now contrast that with an Olympic weightlifter whose sport is less than three seconds and look at how they're built differently. Now what's happening is they're built that way because it's a residual effect of the energy system that they're in. So after six weeks we're going to switch these muscle groups and we're going to go to chest and back, legs, arms and shoulders off, chest and back, legs, arms and shoulders. So why would we do that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this at some point, your body is, is going to accommodate to it. It's going to get used to it and we don't want that to happen. What we're really trying to do is to increase our PC system. We're trying to actually get it to a point where it's, it's on the verge of breaking. We're causing so much stress to this guy that your body has to adapt, and it adapts by, by getting bigger, all right? So once you switch these muscle groups, now think about it, chest, shoulder, tricep, all those muscles are working together. Now once I start doing a push-pull on the same day, not only am I activating chest and back muscles, but think about my arms that are also going along for the ride. I'm using shoulder, I'm using bicep, I'm using tricep. So I just basically, I just doubled the workload here. And this is why we only want to run that for about six weeks. At some point at the end of six weeks, not only is the energy system going to be start kind of going downhill a little bit, and you'll notice because emotionally you're going to be very fatigued. You're going to be, I can remember doing this to the point, I've only had, to be honest with you, I've only had a handful of clients that were able to sustain this training volume uh, for a full 14 weeks, including myself, because if you're training hard enough, you're going to start walking into the gym and just like, you know, emotionally exhausted. And this is what we want, guys. We want to get to a point where we're almost starting to see little, little injuries starting to creep up. Tendonitis, things like that, it's part of, part of it. But you're going to notice mentally, physically, emotionally, by the end of 14 weeks, you're going to need to take a week and, and walk away from, tr from training for a little while. So understand the system. Chest, shoulder, tricep, leg day, back and bicep. We run that for eight weeks and then six weeks. We're going to switch up those muscle groups, chest and back, legs, arms and shoulders. At the end of all this, I'm going to show you some examples of how we can put all that together. So we got the three on one off thing here. Or, and uh, so three on one off, three on two off. Your choice or set up your calendar consistently so you have the same day off every single week. So we've talked about hypertrophy. Now, once again, that's a time variable. So when we're talking about the amount of time that we need to be in that energy system, we're looking at rep ranges of eights and tens. You really don't want to go lower than 8s and 10s. Women, once again, a little higher rep range of about 12. Um, and I really would recommend that as you are training, that we're thinking about workload here. 
We want the metabolic effect, guys. We want to get bigger. We want to get stronger. But at the same time, man, I can't tell you how important it is that we're not getting fatter. And I just see too many coaches, too many people out there um, that are pushing their product and, and they're obese. It's not okay, man. It's just not okay. From a scientific standpoint, fat is not helping you. Um, it, is, it is not something, having a huge belly and being obese is, is just sheer laziness. That's all there is to it. And it's not understanding what kind of volume and nutrition needs to accompany this kind of programming. Now, you might see some big guys, some strongman type guys who, you know, have a kind of distended belly. Well, I guarantee if you look at a lot of the strongman, competitive strongmen that are out there, you know, they're, they're 10% or, or less. I know Bill Kazmar back in the day, I guarantee he was 330 pounds and, and was single-digit body fat. He was a beast. Um, now, you might see what looks like, wow, you know, that guy's got a big gut, but I will guarantee you, if you look at what's happening to their bodies from the inside out, their core is so thick. Their diaphragm is probably as thick as my quad is. So there's a lot of muscle that is happening here. Their abdominals are just super thick and obliques are just super thick. So once again, please guys, don't be lazy. And we'll talk a little bit about nutrition in this. It's not okay to be a fat ass. It's not the name of the game. So next thing I want to talk to you guys about is, is volume. I'm going to... I'm going to do some examples of workouts here, and I'm going to add all these things up and help you guys understand. Volume is it. When we're talking about hypertrophy, it is all about volume. Volume is really simple to compute. It is your repetitions times the amount of sets times the weight used. Very simple. Over time, that volume has got to increase. It can increase via repetitions, it can increase via sets, it can increase via weight, but it can also increase in the amount of exercises that you're doing as well. And uh, once again, I'll show you some examples. So one of the great things about having a coach and the need of having a coach is we don't do such a good job ourselves of being able to really objectively look at uh, our training schedule and, and either, you know, I really, like, I know how to take anybody and walk them up to the cliff. Now, sometimes a coach needs to push that client off the cliff, and sometimes they need to pull them back. It's really hard to know when to do that for yourself. In increasing or decreasing volume over time, uh, over the 14-week schedule, is absolutely critical. So it's a, it's a little tricky, and this is where periodization also comes into play later on. So uh, the name of the game, guys, I hope you can see all this, is volume and macros. If you're not adding your volume, if you're not looking at a macro-based nutrition program, meaning you know exactly how much protein, carbohydrate, and fat your body needs to get, bigger, stronger, and ripped, then you are just pissing in the wind. It's not a conversation. If you're getting bigger, stronger, and ripped, and you're not recording volume, and you don't know your macros, it was an accident, a pure accident. You won't be able to replicate it. You might have gotten there out of pure genetics or whatnot, but you will not be able to replicate it. The conversation, and the only conversation that I want to have is based on science and that is volume and macros. I gotta know my numbers and if you don't know them you need to find out. Email us and we'll hook you up with that. So all our all our online training that we offer is roughly $200 a month. It's really really um, as inexpensive as we can make it and um, well worth it. So if you guys are already going shit man I'm over my head I need some help email me. Please I'd love to help you. So Volume, incredibly uh, important that we're looking at that. So here, nutrition, supplementation, recovery. Once again, nutrition, I can't tell you, once again, I read everything I can get my hands on. 
and there's a lot of power lifters, uh, strong men that have written books, their methods on weight training. I can't tell you the last one that I read and also immediately just threw it in the trash as soon as they say you need to be drinking a gallon of milk or a gallon of chocolate milk a day. Uh, what? Based on what, man? If I drank a gallon of milk a day, I'd, I'd be 200 pounds of pure fat. That's just stupid, guys. If you don't know from a scientific perspective where your nutritional macros need to be, then you shouldn't be recommending anything about nutrition. What you should say is, I don't know shit about nutrition, so please go and, and talk to somebody else. Once again, guys, you know, uh, reach out to us. Dr. Tiff can get enough information based on your lean body mass that we can assign these macronutrient uh, profiles. But don't be drinking a gallon of milk a day and, and think that somehow, some way, that that's going to end up in anything other than just getting fat. Whew. So, nutrition is incredibly important, and I don't want to get into a uh, um, you know, big picture with that because it is a science, and you need to look at it as a science. Supplementation, some things you absolutely have to be doing. Uh, creatine and creatine monohydrate, there absolutely doesn't need to be anything else in that creatine. Now, let me also say something about creatine. Creatine does a couple of things. It will help to restore this PC system. So you'll be able to recover and push more weight faster. We're adding more volume because of that. The other thing is, it, it is it's an intracellular volumizer. And I know there's some creatine products out there that are saying, you know, it won't bloat you, it won't gain water. Well, then it doesn't do its job. The job of creatine is to store more fluid in that, in that muscle cell. It makes the muscle cell hypertrophy. We want the, the cell to get bigger. There's two ways a muscle cell can get bigger. Hypertrophy, which means the cell itself is getting larger via fluid. The other one is hyperplasia. Now, we ha science has not proven that hyperplasia actually happens in a human being because to, to determine that, we'd have to do a cross-section of the muscle tissue over a length of time. The only, the only places that they have seen hyperplasia is in animals. So, and that's because they can obviously do that. You can't really do that on a live human being. So we know it's happening, but there's still some controversy as to how it's happening. This is the one we're really focusing on, hypertrophy. So creatine's got to be in there. Branched chain amino acids, got to have them. Um, and the way I like to do it is in powder form. I'm not going to recommend any brands. Uh, if there's any big companies out there that want me to, to do that, then please send me your information and I'll look at it. Um, but the way I like to do it is in powder form. And I will put it into about a 16 ounce uh, water bottle along with uh, my creatine. And I'll start drinking it through the warm up. Halfway through the workout, I have drank all of it. So before I finish the workout, halfway through, I've drank it all. And then I'm just going to pure water after that. Uh, you know, so branch chains, creatine, obviously you're going to have to supplement with some good proteins. Uh, it's really the only way or you're just going to be eating a ton of animal. There's different recommendations that we offer uh, for protein per pound of lean body mass. Uh, and once again, I don't want to throw out a general number because it's specific to everybody. Everybody metabolizes proteins differently. Uh, many people are overdoing their proteins. There's a certain amount of protein your body needs. And then the rest of it, you just piss it out. So also recovery, as I was talking about the other day, we got a lot of time for plenty of stretching, foam rolling, uh, making sure you're warming up, cooling down well. This is a time deal, guys. This is a serious, this is a new job. If you really want to train like this and get seriously yoked, it's, it's a new job, okay? So just know, you've got to recover. For every, every hour you're spending in the gym, you need to be spending at least another 20 minutes on top of it recovering. Down here, um, I had written, we're going to move into a strength training cycle after that. So I threw out some general ideas yesterday, or the video I did last on some general 5x5 five five getting stronger, incorporating more resistance training. What we're doing here is 
if if you guys get a hold of this book and start reading it, Tudor Bompa did a really good job of looking at all the different energy systems and how a human or a human uh, a a serious athlete would go into different energy systems at different times of year and periodize that program. Now what. Bumpa recommends is that after we have created all this size in the muscle, we want to start targeting strength. And once we're doing that, now we're talking about ATP, and we're going back to rep ranges of the of the threes and fives. After about 14 weeks of this, we're going to do a down training for a week, and then our next cycle would be about a, a 10 to 12 week strength cycle. So if you guys are gung ho and want to do it and stay with it, I'm going to do a couple more videos talking about where we go after 14 weeks here. So over here I've written workload uh, and, and metabolic. And basically what I'm talking about, once again, guys, I go, you know, uh, Tiffany and I always keep a membership at other gyms so I don't have to go to work over the weekends um, to get my training in. And I can't tell you you know, I'm a, I'm a student of the human being and, you know, I'm in there, I'm busting ass and I, I look over and, you know, here's homeboy doing his concentration curls and reading a magazine about getting six pack abs. Guys, stop being so freaking lazy, man. Like if you seriously want to get a, a, a body that you are super proud of and obviously, um, you know, you've put in the work. Um, don't be lazy, man. You know, rest breaks are for chumps, even in when we're talking about this CP system. So here's a couple of things that you can do. One is supersets. Um, there's a lot of science that I have seen that, that um, basically is saying because we're supersetting, it's increasing hypertrophy. It's also going to be greater metabolically. So um, you know, and I'll show you some examples. So instead of just doing an exercise, sitting down for three minutes, and then going doing the same exercise, sitting down for three minutes, superset. You could you could be supersetting calves, abs. Um, we could be doing sled work. Uh, love incorporating sled work, kettlebell swings, any number of things. So if we're talking about getting big, strong, and ripped, then we have to have we got to have the metabolism you know, really, really high. And if you're doing heart rate training and you're training effectively, when you're doing this body split, I would guarantee you your heart rate is probably uh, 75 to 100 percent. And roughly, this is a hit. You're doing high intensity interval training six days a week. Now, a couple of these days probably won't be as high as, for instance, a leg day where you're doing big muscle groups, squats, deadlifts, stuff like that, and also doing, you know, supersets of, of sled work. But I'll guarantee you, you know, I know when I'm doing uh, my chest days uh, and I'm competing for powerlifting competitions, I'm working my ass off, man. There's no reason to be lazy. Put the workload in there, guys. All right, guys, so basically what I've got here is some examples of the individual workouts. And this is just an overview to help you guys get started. So starting with chest, shoulder, tricep, once again, I picked my big primary mover. Now, remember, we're doing three on, one off. So the next time, let's say this time I come in and I'm going to work a uh, bench. And I'm going to work it for a regular grip. The next time I come in and I hit bench again, if I want to continue working on that exercise, I want to change it somehow. Maybe uh, I add chains, I add, I add, uh, I add bands, um, we could change the grip. This could be a closed grip. I could focus more on decline, incline. I could do it um, all with dumbbells. So I just need to change it every time I come back and hit this again. I don't want to come back and hit this muscle group the same way, and one of the easiest ways to do that is just think about changing your grip from wide to narrow, changing from barbell specifically to more dumbbells. So bench press, I'm going to do five sets, 10 reps. This can also be 
uh, three sets of 10 reps and two sets of eight reps. If you want to kind of be in a, a periodization where you're, you're actually going up in weight over time, I'm going to come in, I'm going to hit incline four by 10. So I'm going to do basically two big movers there. And these exercises are going to work chest, shoulder, and tricep. Then I'm going to break up those muscle groups. I'm going to look at shoulder, military press, four sets of 10. Uh, I just threw in here lateral raise, four sets of 10. The next time I come back, I want to make sure I'm hitting my shoulder differently. Um, think about all the directions the shoulder can move, not just pressing. You've got front, lateral, and also make sure you're hitting those rear delts. Very important. Tricep, hopefully you guys can see this. I just wrote down push downs, uh, four sets of 10, extensions, four sets of 10 for a total of 25 sets. There's any number of things that you could put in here to work your superset. And I recommend looking at, you know, elements of things that you're, you're a little weak at. This could even be little cardio bursts. You could just be doing high knees in between, kettlebell swings, any number of things. Um, so once again, total number of, th of 25 sets at the end of all that workout. You're going to record every bit of it and you're going to add it all up. Remember, it's going to be sets times reps times weight, leg day, got to squat, you got to squat. So let's just say one day I'm going to do squat, the next time I come back and do legs again, I'm going to do deadlift, I'm going to do leg press. Make sure you're changing it up, guys. You can also be doing squats on Smith racks, different kinds of bars. There's a lot of ways to vary these movements. Five sets of 10, I'm going to follow it up with Romanian deadlift. That has to be in your workout design, guys. Uh, you can... Um, Think about different variations of those as well. It could be with dumbbells. I do them with a lot of different type of uh, mediums. Five sets of 10. Then I'm gonna break it up. Leg extensions, four sets of 10. Leg curl, four sets of 10. Toe raise, four sets of 10. And I just put in here abs superset. That's 22 total sets for legs, not to mention the amount of sets that I'm doing if I'm more incorporating abdominal movement after each one of those. So think about if I did some variation of abdominal movement after every single exercise, I did 22 sets of abs. Your ass is going to be sore the next day. Back and bicep, lat pull. Once again, that's my big primary mover. I know if I do this movement, I'm incorporating my biceps as well. Just like if I'm working my bench, I know I'm firing shoulder and tricep. If I'm doing squats, I'm, I'm using every single muscle in my body. So I'm going to follow that with some inner back work. I'm going to hit rows. There's a million variations of those as well. Four sets of 10. Don't forget lower back work, incredibly important. Hyperextensions, you'll get that with RDLs as well. Um, four sets of 10. Then we're going to go into bicep. Bicep is a smaller muscle group. Doesn't need quite as much work as the lats. I will do a video here pretty soon specifically talking about the importance of, of lat work. It is an Im immensely important muscle. Um, straight bar curls, five sets of ten. Concentration curls for four sets of ten. Hammer curls. Um, I can't tell you, once again, how important. So two little muscles, brachioradialis, brachialis going in between the bicep and tricep. That's the hammer curl. Guys that are developing elbow tendonitis, throw some hammer curls in there. Incredibly important. Anytime I start experiencing um, some tennis elbow specifically, um, I start doing supersets of hammer curls. It goes away overnight. It's amazing. Throw them in there. Uh, and then I just put superset super set with sled work. Once again, be creative. You know, use what you've got. Uh, you might just have sandbags that you can do supersets with. Find something functional and cool that you can do with them. 26 sets plus the supersets. That's a hell of a workout there, guys. I'm not going to go into variations of chest and back because right here is what it would be. You know, chest and back, they would be bench and lap pull, superset it together. Love to do that workout. Um, and all the way across. Um, and then all my individual, my tricep, shoulder, and bicep would be on its own individual day. But you've got to think, after working chest, shoulder, tricep, you've also smoked that bicep and tricep. I'm going to hit it again over here once I do that down the road. Leg day stays leg day. So I really hope that this uh, helps you guys 
think about setting up a program design, especially if you're really serious about putting on slabs of muscle, you want to get stronger, and you want to stay ripped, guys. Overall, the most important element of all this is your general physical fitness level, that you stay physically fit. It's not okay, guys and gals. It's not okay to be fat and lifting weights. It's not okay. So stop being lazy. Work. Work hard. Once again, any questions that you guys have, please feel free. Email me. Um, write a little something on the videos and I'll, I'll do videos specifically related to any questions that you guys may have. Thanks for watching.